John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, Serious Testing, Successful Hunting. Today I'm going to be testing the Ramcat Hydroshock. Ramcats are a pretty proven head. They have a very loyal following. A lot of people have been using them in the field for a number of years. I've had good friends that swear by them and have taken some nice animals with them. At the same time, I've heard concerning reports over the years about the blades being relatively weak and about some people having trouble uh, when they pull back the, uh, the arrow with the blades hitting their riser because of the blade over shaft design like that. Also heard about some challenges with them fitting in a quiver. So those are the things that have kept me personally from using the head or testing it out in the field until this point. But recently a buddy of mine bought a pack of these that were really cheap. They're on like super clearance sale at Walmart and he sent them to me. All right, thanks Tim. And, uh, and so I thought, well, let's give them a whirl and test them out. So I'm going to zoom on in here and show you some of the specs about this head and describe it a little bit. And then I'm going to put it through my tests. And and the tests I'm going to be doing are the same ones I'm doing for all of my heads in uh, 2020. I'm using my Bowtech SR6 set at 72 pounds, 27 inch draw. I got a 460 grain Bishop FOC King Arrow. I'm using uh, I'm using fobs and I got nocturnal lighted knocks in there. And uh, so I'm using this through a number of different mediums, number of different tests. First, I'm going to test it out to long range, shoot it at 70 yards, and see how it does at distance. And then I'm going to bring it into the lab here, the man cave, and I'm going to shoot it through some of the mediums that I have. First, I've got a, a layer of half inch MDF surrounded by a third inch layer of rubber foam mat. And then after that is a, a big chunk of clear ballistics, clear gel. So I can see the wound channel and see how far it penetrates. And then I'm going to be shooting it through a 22 gauge steel plate for edge retention. So I'm testing the long distance flight, testing the penetration, and testing the edge retention. I'm not doing the water bag test. Okay, I was doing that on some of my tests earlier this year, but I noticed some inconsistencies because when I was testing the last heads, I noticed that there were times that the broadhead would rip the, uh, the bag or would cause the bag to rip rather than just making a clean cut through it. Most of the times it made a clean cut, but in this one particular broadhead I was testing, I noticed that, that there were some tears. So what I did is I'm ordering the thickest uh, Ziploc bags that there are in the market. They're eight mil thick, okay? Like two and a half times as thick as the freezer bags that I was using. And I'm gonna test that out and see if I can get more consistent results because hopefully the bags won't tear with that. But I'll do that in the future when I get those bags in. I'll test it out and you may see them in future tests. But until now, I'm just doing the long distance flight, the penetration, and the edge retention. Let's see uh, how the Hydroshock holds up. So let me describe it a little bit and then we'll put it through those tests. Here you can get a good view of the Hydroshock and you see some interesting technologies in the design. First of all, you have the, uh, the famous Ramcat tip right here and you notice that it's like a chisel tip slash cut on contact tip. They utilize these scoops and that creates very sharp edges right there and a really sharp tip while having the strength of a chisel type tip. More significantly, the, the scoops right there are a patented design that actually create an airfoil, they say. The air like is forced off the, uh, the shaft like that and it, it allows the arrow to fly through the air with a lot less resistance than many other heads because of that scoop. Some other things are the blades. You'll notice that they're, they're swept back swept back pretty considerably, which will aid in penetration. And then you'll notice that they're, uh, they're 0.032 inches thick. They're sharpened on both sides. So just in case you don't get a pass through, that head is going to be cutting as it's inside of an animal. And sometimes uh, broadheads have a tendency to get forced out during the movement of an animal. The muscles can force it out. Well, it's going to be cutting as it's being forced out like that. Additionally, these blades 
uh, fold forward if there's enough pressure on them, like if you're pulling them out of a target, they fold forward and that really helps. Uh, that helps them to come out of a target really well and as well it helps them to come out of an animal and makes them not barbed in that sense because you can pull them out of an animal though they will be cutting as it comes out. Another thing about the blades, and I'll try to get the right angle here so you can see this, is the blades are on there in an offset fashion. Do you see how the blades are offset there? And that's going to make for an interesting wound channel. And, um, and some other things you can note is the HydroShock utilizes these two little rubber washers in there. And you don't want to take those off. Unlike the little rubber washers, or there's one rubber washer that comes on an Exodus, that's just to hold the blades in place. Those are the, these are there to remove the slop from any slop that would be there in the head so that it aligns perfectly well inside the insert and screws in perfectly tightly and snug. And it does feel that way indeed. One of my concerns about the head as I examine it here is with the, sh with the, the blades being 0.032 inches thick, that's not super thick, okay? That's, um, it's a little less than most heads, more than some. But not only are they 0.032 inches thick, but they come down to a pretty narrow point right there. That makes them a little bit weaker than they would be if they weren't so narrow. Then in addition to that, they're sharpened on both sides. So if you look with the bevel on both sides, uh, this, this head, especially this last little quarter inch or so, is not going to be 0.032 inches thick. It's going to be significantly less than that. So that sharpening on both sides, while good in some ways, is also going to weaken the blades. And I'll be interested to see how that bears out. The blades are replaceable, which is really nice. This is the 100 grain version. So the cutting diameter is a full 1 and 3 eighths inches, which is nice for a fixed blade, three blade head. That's a decent amount of cut, more than most. And the 125 grain version comes in a one and a half inch cutting diameter, which is really significant. So I'm interested to see how well this head flies and how it holds up. Let's put it through the tests and find out. Ramcat Hydroshock, 70 yards. Bullseye. Here's the penetration of the Ramcat Hydroshock. You can see the uh, the wound channel is really cool. You see that rotation in the wound channel. And then you see uh, it penetrated exactly seven and three eighths inches. Now I'm gonna shoot the Ramcat Hydroshock into a 22 gauge steel plate. And as always, I'm gonna keep shooting it up to a maximum of five times, but I'm gonna stop the shooting after the blades get a bit too mangled. Here's the hole of the Ramcat Hydroshock into the 22 gauge steel plate. And you can see the hole is significantly smaller than the diameter. The cutting diameter is one and three eighths inches. But here the hole is maximum one inch cutting diameter. And you can see that one of the blades cut quite a bit less deeply than the other two did as well. Here you can see the Ramcat Hydroshock after going through the steel plate just one time. And I gotta be honest, I've never seen this happen. I've never seen the blades bend so significantly. Those two blades just like curved, kind of like an old grave digger they look like, but they weren't like that going in, they were straight. So they, they just curved. But then the third blade just sheared off completely. And even though my arrows here are, are footed, right? They have this collar. You can see what happened is that blade came off and actually cut into the outer layer of this carbon. I mean, look at this. The blade went all the way down and cut all the way deeply into my really nice bishop arrow. And there it is. I mean, there's the blade. You can see it just sticking right out. You can see where it broke off right at that little shear pin, that little pin. And there it is sticking out of my really nice arrow. Now look, I, I really don't appreciate that, all right? I don't appreciate the lack of durability of the broadhead in the first place, but then also don't appreciate that it ruined my really nice Bishop arrow, and that's not easy to do. So what'd you think of the Ramcat Hydroshock? There's certainly some strengths to it, and 
I have no doubt that this has and will kill a lot of animals. And there's a lot of people that when they use it and take an animal or two with it or even more, they swear by it because that's the one that, that brought home their biggest deer or something like that. And hey, more power to you. I'm sure it could do really well through a number of animals in, in certain situations. It flew fantastic. One of the most forgiving fixed blade heads that I've shot, which is saying a lot, especially given its, its wide cutting diameter. It penetrated relatively well through the MDF and into the ballistic gel. However, as you saw, going through that 22 gauge steel plate, I was very surprised. I was hydro shocked. <laughs> I was shocked to see that it did so poorly on the first shot. I've not tested any head that's done that poorly on just the first shot through that relatively thin steel plate. So I don't even have that steel plate there as a durability test. It's more just an edge retention test. So I was surprised that it broke off a blade and I, I could see what happened is it broke off the blade and it stuck in my target there. And then as the shaft continued to penetrate, it just ripped it all the way down the shaft and then uh, got wedged in the end of it there. But um, but to see that, that blade broken off and then to see the other two get bent so considerably and to see the hole into that steel plate being less than one inch or about one inch rather than the full one and three eighths inches, that's just disappointing. So while I'm sure it can kill animals and if you like using it, more power to you, I can tell you this is one of those heads that's not gonna find its way into my quiver. It's just too concerning to me to see that weak of a blade. I, I just honestly, I wouldn't hunt with it. But I hope this is helpful. And again, if you really like these heads, then, then more power to you. <laughs>